Good afternoon from close to Somerton, Victoria. Maybe even in the township or village or suburb of Somerton, Victoria, north of Melbourne. I'm about eight minutes away from where I'm dropping this van back. Don't have to drop it back till three o'clock. I'm aiming for two o'clock. It's now currently about 40 minutes until two o'clock and I believe that that's doable. In 1994, I was headed to Europe for four months with my then wife, and we are going to base ourselves, and we did base ourselves, in a place called Hofdorp, which is near Schiphol, which is the airport for Amsterdam. And in Hofdorp, at a place called the Boerderij, which is Dutch for the farmhouse, we made our camp in about, oh, I'm going to say, late March, early April 1994. Before I left, my elder sister, Dr. Quinn, literacy woman, bought me a book and introduced me to a travel writer by the name of Bill Bryson. And the book is called Neither Here Nor There, or Neither Here Nor There, depending on which side of the tracks or which cultural linguistic group you belong to. I'm going to say that on several, many, so many rereads of that book, probably doesn't stand up to the test of time in a Me Too environment. Hashtag Me Too. There's a couple, a few little references in there that were I Bill Bryson, try again, were I Bill Quinn, with the talent that Bill Bryson has, I'd probably reissue it with some rewrites. And you can get into a whole discussion over Roald Dahl and cultural and literary revisionism if you want to, but I'd choose not to. There's just a few little elements in there that I'm not particularly enamorous of. However, having said that, I proceeded to, as my elder sister did, make a spectacle of myself on trains, planes, automobiles, buses, by reading sections of it, putting it down on my knee and laughing out loud. Because there are some, for me and for her, hilarious elements of that book especially since I was reading some of it on the plane on the way to Europe for my third visit to Europe and reading about Bill Bryson's third trip around Europe. Sometimes I was in the same places, sometimes I did the same things that he did. I, we, we, not I, we, were in a Trattoria, Tver, no, Trattoria is better, Oh, I'm trying to think what city I was in. <laughs> I was in a an eatery in some European major city, recommended by Lonely Planet, and I, we were sitting there at the table on one of those big shared tables, which I adore because they're great for having conversations and striking up conversations with randoms. And purely by the fact that I had the Lonely Planet book sitting on the table, struck up conversations with a couple of people. And then after I started those conversations, I looked around and noticed that many, 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 many people had copies of The Lonely Planet on their table. Now, I'm a big fan of being recommended places, and Lonely Planet is a pretty good, for me, recommendation for places to go, things to see, places to go and eat or have coffee. The older I get, the more I take a little bit of that, but more often I like the joy of discovery, of pulling off the highway, of not stopping at the services, of wandering into a cafe because it looks interesting, or there's some reason that's triggered some synapse of mine and I've gone in and had a look. What was the point? What did I come in here for? Yes, I haven't read Neither Here Nor There for a long time. However... On this trip, I have made my own discoveries. I'm just really, really trying to think of what I come in here for. <laughs> Look, let's just say that I'm burning daylight. I need to wrap this up so that I can uh, not use up all of the storage. I've got about 4% left on this. Well, I had 4% until I started this little chat on this device. And I've got another device which is up to about 98%. So when I get to the Virgin Lounge, hopefully... Oh, that's a story. 
that's a story. That ring usually sits on my middle finger of my left hand. However, at some point on the road between Kyneton and Melbourne, I, instead of spitting my chewing gum out the window onto the road, I thought, no, 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 no. I will take it out of my mouth and fling it such that it gets onto the grass. Because it is biodegradable, eventually. But when I flang it, why I wear these rings is for a couple of reasons. But one of them is, it's a good indication... If they slip off, if they fall on the floor, and they do often, that's a sign that I'm dehydrated. So when I opened the window and flung my chewing gum out around about just north of Gisborne, the chewing gum went to the grass, and so did my ring. So I've moved this one over from the left hand onto the right hand. Did I fret? Did I worry? Did I get upset? No, I laughed out loud. I bought all three of these rings. This one, the one that's gone... And that one, I bought them from a shop at Coolalinga, which is just outside Palmerston, which is just outside of Darwin in September 2021. They cost me $10 each. And they have been from Darwin to Alice Springs to Brisbane to Caboolture to Woodford, down to again to Brisbane, over to Western Australia, all around Western Australia, down to Denmark, Albany, Margaret River, Bustleton, and now on this 36 day odyssey around Port Ferry, Melbourne, uh, Seymour, Queanbeyan, Canberra, Majors Creek, back to Queanbeyan, Canberra. Where did I go after that? Down, straight down to Essendon, out to Creswick. <laughs> Stopped last night in Kyneton, and we're about to hit Somerton. So the fact that I lost a $10 ring on the road between Kyneton and Melbourne, I'm not fretting too much. One of three things is going to happen. It's going to sit there and rust. It's going to be picked up by somebody, or it might feature in some native bird's nest as a shiny thing. Hopefully a magpie, or a corella, or a black cockatoo. I think that's enough for now, don't you? I do. From somewhere near Somerton, about to drop off a whole bunch of stuff to an op shop or a community centre and then make my way to the Apollo headquarters in Victoria by way of my taking a dry eraser, a dry uh, whiteboard eraser and erasing the tracks, not of my tears, well, some, many tears of joy but erasing the tracks of myself. It's Bill Quinn saying, I'll see you when I'm looking at you. Goodbye for now.